Hello, everyone. John Pesalis here from Real Philosophy Realty. Thank you again for joining us on our Moose Smartly YouTube channel. Going forward, I'm going to be kicking off with a weekly update on some of the latest trends that I'm looking at, both in our housing market, in our economy, and I think in the issues that uh, are relevant to many of us. So if there's anything top of mind that you're interested in hearing about, please post it in the comments below. Uh, today, I'm going to be talking a little bit about Canada's booming population, what some economists are calling a population trap. Uh, and I'm going to talk a little bit about Canada's recent changes to international student numbers, uh, putting a cap on that, and, and what impact, if any, that might have on the housing market. So just kicking off with a little bit of, of sort of background on Canada's population boom. Uh, our population is growing by about 1.2 million people per year. That's about 3% population growth rate. Uh, way higher than than most OECD, well, probably all, every OECD quite, country, quite frankly. Um, for context, you know, last year, uh, the U.S., I think their population grew by about 1.3 million. Uh, and obviously, they're, they're almost 10 times bigger than Canada. So our 1.2 million, given our population, is, is unbelievably high. Now, of course, when countries have a booming population or a growing population, they, of course, need to uh, invest in capital to support those people. Both, you know, countries sort of uh, governments and businesses needs to invest in capital, of course, to support that booming population. The challenge, according to some economists, is that our, our economy is growing or our population is growing so quickly. It's outpacing uh, the ability for us to save and reinvest to support this booming population, which is actually leading to declining living standards. And there's a great quote here I'm going to read from Tony Keller from the Globe and Mail, who tries to unpack this concept uh, of a population trap. And he says, in plain English, the number of forks in the economic pie is growing faster than the pie and faster than our capacity to invest in more ovens to bake more pie. The result is less pie per Canadian, declining GDP per capita and declining living standards. Um, you know, and, and this is generally what we're seeing in Canada. I mean, if we look at GDP per capita, which is generally like a, a measure a lot of economists is used to see, you know, the type measure living standards in, in Canada uh, and what our GDP is relative to each individual, that we're not any higher than we were in 2017. Whereas the U.S., if we look at a chart, uh, has, has been seeing far more growth in their GDP per capita. Um, you know, and, and one of the challenges, of course, is when our population is, is booming so quickly, even businesses, there's this tension between, well, what are businesses going to do? How much money should they invest in capital and improving their businesses versus just leaning on labor? And when your population is booming as rapidly as, as Canada is, the labor is cheap. Uh, and that is kind of part of the goal of this population boom, uh, to keep labor cheap. And what ends up happening is businesses, rather than I mean, some of them, rather than just closing because they're not efficient uh, without depending on cheap labor, just kind of stay afloat barely. Uh, other businesses don't invest in capital because it's just cheaper to lean on uh, relatively inexpensive labor. Uh, and that's why if you kind of look at a chart at, uh, and this one's also from the Golden Mail, sort of the capital stock per capita uh, has been plummeting in Canada relative to the United States and, and it's been declining in Canada for the past 10-ish or so years. And again, I think that has to do with this tension with businesses uh, not investing enough and, and probably not even being able to kind of keep up with this, this boom in our, our population. So that, of course, is a challenge that's impacting a lot of households. And, and on a previous on a episode, economics episode, uh, where I spoke with BMO's economist, Robert Kapchik, he kind of talked about why GDP per capita is important because GDP might be growing because our population is booming, but our GDP per capita is declining, which is why a lot of households feel uh, poor, quite frankly, and can't afford as much as they did in the past. And I think those are important things that we need to be looking at. So speaking of our booming population, a big part of that is international students, uh, which have surged over the past few years. That's kind of been the main driver of our population boom. Uh, there are no limits, or uh, up until you know last week or so this week, have been no limits on the number of, of uh, international students coming to Canada. These were largely driven by the provinces. Uh, the feds just signed off on it, which is why we've seen this explosion. And a lot of it is just you know, these these colleges that are are taking advantage, really, 
uh, of this untapped sort of potential to basically uh, grow their their international student enrollments to, to at any level. Uh, and the and the the government, the federal government, is is clamping down on that. And it, uh, Mark Miller, our immigration minister, had kind of a funny quote. He said, "It's not the intention of this program to have sham commerce degrees or business degrees." that are sitting on top of massage parlors that someone doesn't even go to. And then they come into the province and drive an Uber. So there is a lot of fraud uh, going on in our international uh, in our international student program. And really, they're trying to clamp down on that. So what have they done? They basically put a cap on new enrollments. Uh, I think it was around 360,000, which they say is a decline of about 35 percent over the current number. So um, you know, obviously, anyone who's in a program is still staying. So they're trying to put a cap on new enrollments. Um, this, it sounds like, is actually going to lead to about a 50% decline in uh, in Ontario because they're weighting it by the province. So we're probably going to see far fewer international students coming to Canada next year based on this, this new policy. So what does this mean to housing? And, and I think it's an important question, especially for people who, and we've seen this over the past 10 years, have bought low-rise homes in some of the suburbs and, and are just basically renting them out to international students. Um, and if that is something that you are doing or you know someone is doing, they really need to be mindful of these changes because it's probably going to be a lot harder to be renting out you know, rooms to international students next year, largely because these enrollment numbers are going to be going down. So if that is your entire business model, uh, you know, for your property, you need to rethink that. And, you know, does owning that home make sense if you cannot get the certain number of international students renting them out? Um, can you make it work as a long term rental, you know, renting out the main part of your home and a basement apartment separately? And if you can't, you know, you may want to exit the market uh, at some point because it's going to be harder to make ends meet. Uh, and again, a lot of the the investor demand that we've been seeing uh, in the outskirts of the GTA have been specifically for these reasons, people buying homes, uh, single family homes, converting them effectively into mini rooming houses for international students. Um, so, you know, as an investor, that's what you should be thinking about. As a home buyer, will this impact the market potentially? I mean, in some of these markets, you may end up seeing uh, more listings hit the market. My feeling is, you know, if that does happen, most investors are not forward looking, which means they're not going to anticipate this shock and kind of get ahead of the market. You know, this might mean that come September, they're still going to be holding it, hoping for more students. And if more students don't come, and they have a hard time renting them, it may be a reactionary effect that, that we might see more listings in some of these markets in the fall rather than this year, uh, rather than the spring of this year. So I think that's going to be something important to keep an eye on because I think these impacts are going to be a little bit lagged. I think investors are optimistic. They think they'll beat the market and, uh, and, and do better than most other people. But you know we'll see how that plays out for some of them and if they can even hold on to their properties as long-term uh, tenancies. Uh, so that is it for this week. If you have any questions or comments, uh, please post them in the uh, comments below. Thanks again. <music>